Hey everybody, Bearded Rogue here, and um, it's been a while since I put a video up. I've been really, really busy um, doing uh, work on the Fire in the Library Kickstarter uh, preparation and getting some of my other games ready for Unpub and various other things. Um, and uh, since my top 10 games of uh, 2017 video went up, I haven't, I don't think, put anything else up. Um, just been really busy. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today is some of the prep work that I've been doing unpub-wise, um, specifically around stocko trucks. Um, so this video is going to have two different purposes. One is just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of the evolution of the game, and two, to uh, give you an idea of how I uh, produced the latest update. So, those of you who have uh, been following me on Twitter um, have seen uh, the game Stocko Trucks evolve over time, both its name and its components. I have uh, some videos up of earlier versions, and um, the uh, last version that I really displayed um, featured these square-like tiles that inserted into a board, like a physical board, and then these were placed inside, and um, they're all double-sided. They have uh, the numbers and the shapes, and then they tell you which shape is on the back, and then whether the value of the item goes up or down. Um, and they were these little squares. Okay, that was the last version I think that I talked about. Um, I don't think it even had the shapes on it uh, when I last talked about it. Those are a more recent addition that have to do with goal cards, uh, which are intermediary uh, goals uh, in the game, um, so that not everything is tied directly to the end game scoring with the uh, stock investments. Um, but those are the uh, last version. The squares in a uh, board are the last version that I really talked about. Since then, I've made uh, an adjustment. One is the board is completely gone, and we moved on to tiles like this. Um, these uh, tiles are like two inches um, and by two inches, and then the corners are removed for ease of flipping. Again, they're still double-sided. They still have all of the uh, shapes. Now they tell you exactly what is on the other side, uh, so we didn't need the arrow anymore to indicate uh, whether it went up or down. You could just see whether it went up or down. Um, and uh, these were made originally using, as you can see, they're, they're warped, but these were made using two pieces of cardstock uh, that was then glued together. And uh, the glue caused all sorts of warping issues. In addition, just being cardstock, like 110 uh, cardstock, means that they blow away on the board. So when creating a board out of these and putting all of the tiles down, uh, you want them to be fairly close to each other. The taco trucks will go in the circles, basically, uh, formed by these. Um, let me actually get four of them so that you can see, yeah. See, they create that little circle where the truck can go. And technically you want them spaced a little bit so that there's room for the truck and, uh, movement. Again, the cutouts are so that you can flip them easier without quaking everything, um, and knocking everything over. But, um, these were a great idea. Like, the shape of them was, was a good idea. The, um larger uh, numbers and everything, even indicating exactly what was on the other side. This was a good idea uh, and concept, but in practice it didn't work so well. As you can see, there's warping issues, and they all warped in different ways, and there was probably a better way to do this. Um, for example, uh, one of the techniques I'm about to talk about, I could have used uh, along with the cardstock um, to produce some pretty uh, standard tiles that wouldn't have been warped all over the place. Um, unfortunately, though, they still would have been too light um, and prone to movement on the table. Um, like, gusts of wind um, would be enough to move the whole board away, which is not what you want um, 
in a uh, board game. You don't want something where an errant fan or somebody opening a door can ruin the entire setup. So, the newest version, the updated version, uh, that I just produced this weekend, um, uses this same kind of idea um, of the tiles with the cutout corners, but we've mega scaled it. Um, so we went from 2 to 2.5 um, square. Um, so that's one of the first changes that we've made. Um, in addition, uh, th this lets us make the shape slightly bigger and uh, make the numbers uh, fit better in the shapes. So uh, like some of the stars before had the numbers touching and now we have some space in the star uh, that means that they don't touch. Um, in addition, we were able to incorporate a bunch of other improvements. Um, one of the uh, biggest improvements is now the size of the number inside of the shape changes based on the actual value of the number. So in the game, for those who haven't played, the only number that you need to pay attention to uh, adjacent to a truck is the largest one. So we basically scaled it so that uh, the larger the value, the larger the number. So this 5 is obviously more important than this 1. It just makes scanning the table visually much easier um, for people. In addition, you'll see the high side of this tile is in black, like the shape is black. The lower side is gray. So even if you uh, don't know exactly what it flips to, uh, you'll know whether it goes up or down. Um, this is the only thing that may be too subtle. The black and the gray may be too similar uh, on the eyes, um, but uh, we had to make sure that the gray was still readable across the, the table. Um, but that was that. In addition, we've now added player counts uh, to the top of some tiles. So if you're playing with that number of players, you include tiles that have that. So this would only be used in a six player game, this tile. This one you would add as soon as you have four players. Um, anything that doesn't have them is just included all the time. This tile would always be in the game, uh, regardless of player count. Um, we uh, revised all of the numbers in the game to better distribute them in a curve, so there are uh, uh, a, lot, um, a lot fewer of the really high-value ones, uh, making the board too similar. Um, there are now only two fives and two fours in the whole uh, whole setup. Um, we also made another change. Um, let me see if I can find one that's much more visible. Here we go. Uh, so the um, last version of the game, we had these one twos uh, for the um, starter tiles. So there are six different colors of truck in the game, and each one has a tile. Um, that corresponds to it for where they start on the board. There's always one truck of each color on the board in the beginning of the game to allow for some of the uh, uh, abilities that you can use, some of the actions you take to have things to manipulate. Um, and uh, one of the changes we made is now those are 2 and 0 instead of 2 and 1. Um, that change was made um, for a couple of reasons. One, because we needed more zeros in the game, um, just in general, and also because now there's a uh, more of an incentive to use your flip action um, off the bat. Um, these tiles don't start on a particular orientation, so it may start on a two, or it may start on the zero side, either way. Again, there are no player count uh, markers here, so these two colors are in every game, green and black are. Um, so how did I make these? So, as you can see, these are like rigid, straight, super, super good compared to the, the ultra warp of the previous versions. So what did I do differently? Well, I did a couple of things differently, and we're going to talk about that now. So the first thing is this right here. Matte white sticker paper. 
This is full sheet label paper. You will see it called that by some brand name. Staples calls it sticker paper. Basically, it's paper that you run through a printer that has a backing that you can peel off and you can apply the whole thing. You can cut it out in whatever shape you want and then sticky it to it. Some people use standard labels like Avery style labels and stuff like that and that's totally legit. You can do that. Um, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, but this allows you to make whatever shape you want. So what I did is I just printed all of these. Um, they fit three across uh, at 2.5 size um, with a little bit of a border. Um, but I put uh, three uh, across and then it's like four down, I think it is. Yeah, that's right, four down. And they fit on here. And then I cut them all out. Well, first I took them and I stuck them to mat board. So for those not familiar with matte board, matte board is used in framing, uh, like for pictures or posters or art prints, various things like that. Um, you'll see it at framing stores specifically. I got mine at uh, Michael's. Um, it's regularly available at art stores. But as you can see, it's much, much thicker. It's, it's nearly chipboard. Um, the reason I like matte board is because uh, it's easy to get. Um, it comes in sheets that are gigantic, like bigger than standard poster board, um, and you can cut it with scissors. You don't have to use an X-Acto knife or anything like that. It's probably the thickest board that you can cut with scissors, um, to be fair. Um, if you have some heavy-duty shears, you could probably get through some of the uh, chipboard, but most chipboard is going to require an X-Acto knife. Um, this is cuttable with scissors. So I would just take a full sheet of this, as you can see uh, where the cutout is, take a full sheet of this and just stick it to this board. And then once it's stuck there, I could cut out the entire thing on one side. Then the other side was also printed on matte paper, and I would just cut it out manually and then sticky it to the back, line it up. Um, and then... In order to get these corners, I actually have this circle punch here. Um, and uh, the circle punch, if I can show you, actually lines up really perfectly with those corners. So I could just punch them all out, all four at once. So just sticky one side, uh, cut it out, sticky the other side, and then trim the corners and you're done. And these guys aren't going anywhere in a stiff breeze. Like these, they aren't heavy, like they, they aren't like bricks, but uh, compared to the uh, double-sized cardstock, not only are they thicker than two pieces of cardstock, uh, they don't move. Um, that's partially because they're heavier. It's also partially because they're larger and there's more surface area touching the table. Um, and that increased friction actually keeps them from, like, shifting around just due to gusts of wind or players moving their arms over the table. Um, this version was a really cool proof of concept, but it was really impractical to play, like even solo testing that I tried doing myself. I was regularly having to reset the board over and over and over again, which was really frustrating and had me wondering if maybe I shouldn't go back to the little squares set in an indented board. Um, this is just more portable, as you can see. Like, this takes up uh, not much more space than a deck of cards. Um, it allows for a little bit more modularity as far as things go. Um, you could potentially change the layouts from a simple square or rectangle grid. Uh, if you wanted to. Uh, I haven't done a lot of that experimentation um, because uh, I'm still in the phase where I'm making sure that the, you know, most basic version of the game works 100% of the time. Um, but um, these uh, don't take up as much space as a board. Uh, they're much easier and cheaper to manufacture than an indented board. Uh, this is just chipboard. In addition, as I showed you before, like, if you put four of them together, and I don't know how viable this is uh, long term, but if you put four of them together, you get this circular space in the middle. If you add enough bleed 
then, that circular space could also be a punched out component, like a token, that you could use. You could actually make the taco truck tokens, uh, those little holes. Or you could make the money uh, that you use in the game, uh, those holes on the punch board. Uh, and use even more of the punch board sheet than you would just making the tiles. Um, again, uh, the corner scoops are so that you can flip the tiles while they're on the table. Um, and t usually when they're on the table, you don't want them quite touching. This means that you can slide the trucks between spaces. Think of the gap as the streets that the trucks move on. And then these are like the corners that the trucks live on. Um, but this way you can reach in and flip this tile without knocking a whole bunch of uh, trucks and stuff all over the place. That's the idea behind it anyway. It seems to work pretty good in practice, um, but I haven't put it in front of a lot of other people yet. It's just mostly been me uh, testing solo by myself, um, making sure that the piece manipulates well and everything. But that's the latest on uh, Stocko Trucks. Uh, as far as that piece goes, there's been some other development in the uh, cards. Um, how the actions work and, and various things like that. And the addition of goal cards, which I don't think I've talked about uh, at all on video. Um, but uh, this really excites me. Um, this is kind of feels like an evolution of the same idea. Uh, I feel bad that, yet again, uh, design and development has removed a board from one of my games. Um, Stocko Trucks was the first board game that I really had, and uh, now it's tiles. Um, but uh, I think this overall is better a better direction for the game going forward as far as components go. Uh, this is much, much uh, easier to produce uh, than a full-on uh, board. It also means that the box for it can be smaller because this a board necessitates a box of a certain size, um, this can fit in a much smaller space than a full-on board could. Um, plus, since the rest of the game is some money and, uh, two decks of cards, basically, um, I guess three decks of cards now with goals, but, uh, it, it there's no reason that it needs to be in a gigantic, you know, Ninja Turtles size box or a Concordia size box because the board was the major component creating size issues. Uh, issues is the wrong word, but creating a size restriction on the size the box could be. Um, the box could still be large, but this uh, means that it doesn't have to be. Anyway, um, enough of my rambling. Um, just know that this uh, right here, um, the matte white sticker paper. Always get the matte white. The shiny white will produce glare for your components. The matte white will not. It'll look like standard paper, so uh, that's one reason to always get the matte white sticker paper. Uh, the full sheet label paper opens up all sorts of possibilities for components that you can make because you can use scissors to cut it to whatever size or shape you want. Um, you can also use hole punches to just make them a particular shape. So if you want circles, you can use inch circles. I have a, a three-quarter inch circle as well. Um, and then stars and various other punches like this exist. Uh, mat board is very sturdy. Um, adds some weight to your components, but can be cut. And as you can see, this one's actually two colors, black or white. Um, most of the varieties that you get will be two different colors. Now, that being said, you can get double white and double black. I just happened to pick this one up. And it comes in gigantic sheets. Um, I used basically two and a half notebook size uh, sheets um, to produce these tiles. Uh, and um, I could easily do that three more times over with the one sheet of mat board that I bought. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um... Yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and uh, this is the version of Stocko Trucks that I'm bringing with me to Unpub. Uh, so these tiles will be the ones that are physically there at my table. Um, so if you want to check out the game and you're at Unpub, uh, they'll be there. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Bearded Rogue out.